Hey guys, what is going on? It is Bingzer here and welcome back to a brand new squad builder and as you can see I probably put it in the title or something like that. This formation, the 3-5-2 is back and it is deadly guys. I was coming up against it non-stop this past week. I don't know why and it was destroying me each time so I was like, hold on a minute. Let me go and give this a try. I want to see what's going on with this formation. It used to be very good back in, I'd say FIFA 13 was really the last time this formation was great. And it appears to me, and maybe if you guys have used it before, this formation is back. It is good as ever. It's a very overpowered formation, at least in my opinion. And I've got a few explanations for why that might be. I'll, t I'll talk to them like at the end of, well, talk about them at the end of the squad builder um, before we get into the highlights. But let's build this team. This team worked out perfectly as well. I've got a few theories on why this team worked so well. For this formation, man, it's so good. It's got so many attacking options and the defense. It feels more like it's got five defenders in a sense, especially for me with the players that I use. And it wasn't even the two CDMs, even though you could tell like that. For me, it was person in the right mid who was dropping back and almost played like a fifth defender. It was like a five back with five attackers at the same time. Where every it, it just worked, guys. This formation is back. Go and give it a try. Build whatever team you want to build. And just go and take it in to online single matches. If you don't feel confident with it, um, take it into online single matches. Now, the only issue with this team is you're not going to keep a clean sheet, obviously. You've got three defenders at the end of the day, three centre-backs. It's possible, don't get me wrong, very possible. You can defend very well with this team, at least from my experience. But I like to play attacking with this team because it's got so many attacking options. And um, Let's just get into this. Let's just get into it, guys. In the goalkeeper position, we go with an 85 rate of Kalon Navas. First time I've used him this year, he's a very good goalkeeper, I'll be honest, I really did enjoy him. The only thing I didn't enjoy about him is long shots, he doesn't seem to be the like the greatest that, he does parry them away, he does save them, he parries them away, your opponent can get a rebound off that, that could be an issue if you're taking this team into foot champs, but other than that, I've got nothing else to criticise this guy, and he was very good for me, I really enjoyed him, I heard quite like a few negative things about him, but I didn't experience a lot of it, he was actually... Very good. Better than our black, in my opinion. And the first centre-back we're going to go with is to get that strong link. It is Rafael Varane from Real Madrid. The French beast. As you can see, 4,000 coins and pay five game, uh, five games played. 6 foot 3, 77 pace, 85 defending, 78 physical. We've got that anchor chem style on him. Just to upgrade his pace and I wanted his physical upgrading as well. But I also wanted to do his pace. I didn't want to put a shadow or anything like that on him. But he's a ridiculous card. First time I've used him this year, I'm pretty sure. Definitely going to be using him again. If you've got a French team or a La Liga team, go and get him. He's so good and so cheap at the same time. And then on the left-hand side, we go with the highest rate of player I've packed this year. And it is Diego Godi, my first and only walkout this year. And it was in a two-player pack. 6'1", 65 pace, 88 defending, 79 physical. Very similar story to Rafael Varane. He's got... Decent pace, obviously not as good as Varane. Very good defender, not too great physical. So I wanted to upgrade his physical, defending and pace. And in-game, I actually switched these two around so the team goes like that. We put Varane on the left, so the pace is over there. And Godin in the middle, so just the, like, the mass amount of defending can really come in and uh, help the team. So anyway, on the right-hand side, we do go with Barzagli. We've got a very high rate of defense, at least. Like, all the players so far, the minimum rating is 84 rated. I've just realised that. I didn't pick up on that before. That might be why this team's pretty good at defending. We've got a very high rate of defence. But anyway, Barzagli, I packed him not too long ago. I actually sold him, went and bought him back. He's got a low high work rate. That's why I went for him out of all the Juventus centre-backs. Low high work rate. I'm not sure if any others actually do, but he was just... He just seemed perfect for me. But yet again, not got the greatest physical. Got very good defending and uh, also got very decent pace. I've got a backbone on him, which does his passing, defending and physical. I bought him with that chem style and I used him in the first game and I felt no need to change it. He's actually really good. Like, maybe he's even better with an anchor chem style and I'm missing out on not putting one on. But he's performed great with that, so I didn't feel it necessary to go and actually put an anchor chem style on him. Anyway, the first CDM of the team is Sami Kadera. This guy last year was one of my favourite players this year. I haven't really used him too much. I've used him quite a bit still, but not as much as I did last year. High, high work rate, 6 foot 2. And just look at his stats. He's so good. And for 5,000 coins, one of the best CDMs on the game, at least in my opinion. I know he starts out as a centre mid this year. 
but just look at them stats. You've got to play him as a CDM. 85 physical, 81 defending, high high work rate, 6 foot 2. He was amazing for me. Really did enjoy him and he just fitted the team perfectly. He was dropping back. He felt like a fourth centre back and it just worked. What player he is, go and give him a try if you've got a German team or a, uh, I'm about to say a Juventus team, a Serie A team. And then if you've got a Serie A team, go and get this right mid. It is Quadrado. First time I've used him this year, definitely not the last. Now I looked at this before and I was like, how has he only got one goal, one assist? But in the games, I've noticed him so much and he's been doing so well. And then I sort of clicked onto it. He's dropping back for me. He's playing more like a right back or a right wing back, I'd say. Because he's pushing up, but he's also dropping back. I actually originally thought he had a high, high work rate just from how he was performing in the game. But it turns out he's a high medium, but he was so good for me. I might have to try him at right forward, see if I can get him like in better goal scoring positions. But he was amazing. Go and get him if you guys have got a Serie A team and you're struggling for a right wing or something like that. He's so good. In this formation, I don't feel it justified him as it did drop back quite a bit, but it helped the team. So I have no faults for this guy. Only praises. What a player he is. Go and pick him up if you guys have got a Serie A team. Anyway, moving over to the left-hand side at CDM, it is the joint highest rate of player in the team, and it is Tony Cruz. Now, I'm not too happy with him, I'm going to be honest, guys. His stamina is it's questionable, it's not too great, at least from what I've played with him he, in the five games. He was around the 50th minute, he just felt like he dropped off, but before the 50th minute, when he had a bit of stamina, he was great. His passing move was like his passing movement was fantastic i really did enjoy him for that maybe that's why he was losing a lot of stamina because i was using the lba so he would run through make a pass run through and uh, it just worked he didn't get a goal or assist but he was like getting the assisted assist if that makes any sense but i do have like i prefer him to have a good amount of stamina i don't know what his stamina stats actually are but it didn't feel too great in game and for 22,000 coins i don't want someone who's only going to last 50 minutes on the pitch the exact opposite to say about the left mid though it is Yannick Carrasco. Obviously, I've got him as an untradeable in my club. Nine games played, two goals, two assists. He can run for days, guys. He never loses stamina. He, he feels so fast in game. 88 pace does not justify how he feels in game. He's so good. I really wanted to give this card a try. I've been using him as a super sub and he's been doing great for me. I wanted to see how he performed the full 90 minutes and he was fantastic. One of the better cards I've used this year. Um, on the left mid from the Liga. He's so good. Go and give him a try. If you've got a Belgian team, I know a lot of people are rocking with a Belgian team and you can't afford Hazard. This guy's pretty much the next best thing and maybe he's the cheap Hazard. I don't know. He's so good. Go and give him a try. In at centre attacking mid, we do go with an Englishman and it is Adam Lallana. Obviously, I really enjoy this card. If you guys have been watching me since the start of the year or start of FIFA 17, sorry, um, you'll know I used him in my starter team. I had like 60 games on him. And then for some reason, he vanished out of my club. I'm not sure if I used him for a squad builder challenge or something. Um, but I'm, I must have done. But yeah, he's still right, really good. Even with the players getting upgrades like the informed defenders and stuff like that. He's still so good. The five-star weak foot for me really makes this card. Three assists, two goals in five games. Can't fault the guy, what a player he is. And then we are going to move over to the left-hand side at striker, and it is actually a centre-forward, and it is Jermaine Defoe. Now, if you guys haven't got this squad builder challenge card, even though he's so good, 31 goals, 16 in a... 31 games, 16 goals and 10 assists. We are going to go and just search this one real quick. You can go and get this card, guys. It's in form. It's got one more pace, the exact same shooting, two less passing, one less dribbling, and then the rest of the stats are the exact same. And it's really not that big of a difference. If you guys want to go and get this card, I'd recommend so. Or just get another English striker. As you can see, he's going for around 30,000 coins. I'm pretty sure the squad builder actually only cost me like 30,000 coins. Anyway, so we are going to put this Jermaine Defoe back in to the team. I've got that Catalyst Cam style on him. It gives him plus 30 in pace. So that gives him like 92 pace or something like that. Which really does come in quite handy with his card. He did feel quite fast in game. You're seeing quite a few of the highlights. He was pace abusing people like Bayi and stuff like that. The chemistry styles this year are huge, guys. Make sure you keep an eye on what chem styles you've got in your player. And the second striker we go with is actually going to be a bit of a throwback. It is going to be Callum Wilson. Eight games from me this year, 41 goals, 39 assists. He's actually injured at the moment. I did um, not play with him in the last game because he was injured. I actually put Alex Hunter in there. I'm sure I'll just go and search if you guys... Uh, want to go and obviously if you've got Alex Hunter you can uh, put him into your team I'm not sure does he actually this will be interesting does Alex Hunter come up on the uh, the search thing I actually don't know no it doesn't that's very interesting I, I did never I never knew that anyway he's right here 
Um, we have got the Hunter Kemp side on, giving him 90 pace and pretty decent shooting. He's played 40 games for me, 21 goals, 13 assists. I only put him in for the last game just because I didn't want to buy the uh, injury card. But anyway, guys, that is the team. That's how it looks. The three-back formation is back. As you can see, everybody is on full chemistry, apart from the off players being on nine chem, but that really doesn't matter too much. But anyway, guys, that is going to be the end of the squad builder. But yeah, let me talk about why I feel this formation is so overpowered. Now, this video might be dragging on a little bit, guys, so I do apologize. But the reason I feel this formation is so overpowered is people are rocking 4-3-2-1. People are rocking... You don't come up against it a lot, but like 4-3-3s a lot this year. They want a, they want a decent midfield and very good attacking options. Now, you've got three attackers right here, which are going to be pushing the four, well, the four defenders, what they've got. Then you've got these two left mids and right mids. So, these four defenders, they can only man mark four people. There was always a player in space who was ready for a run, who was ready to go and score a goal, and it worked. The attacking options in this team, you can just click passes together and there'll always be a player free. You'll never be even marked unless you're coming up against like a five-back or something like that. But I don't know, this team just, I played a five-back and I won, so I don't really know. But the defense, Quadrado was dropping back hugely. Uh, Sammy Kadira, he was playing like a fourth defender and it felt like I had five at the back at some point and then as soon as I was attacking it switched I had five attackers and uh, a really it was just a really good team but that's why I feel this formation works so well the formations people use this year I feel this is the counter formation for all of it um, for, for the majority of them so yeah that's what I feel I'll show you guys what I do with my custom tactics and it is literally keep everything the same and put that on cover that's all I do because that sets uh, offside trap and then player instructions I set Sammy Kadira to stay back while attacking and as you can see everyone else is uh, on the standard player instructions that's literally it guys and this formation and just everything about this team was amazing for me hopefully you guys did enjoy the squad building section let's get into the highlights and let's see what this three at the back formation is really about all right guys so let's get in to these highlights now that i've noticed a few things while I'm editing the highlights what i didn't really mention in the squad builder part one of those things is the fact that I was bringing on super subs. So the two super subs I was bringing on was Firmino because I really started to enjoy his card. I don't know why. If you guys use him quite a lot, you'll know he's actually very good and very underrated, at least from my experience with him. Really started to enjoy him. And another thing, uh, the other player was Insigne. Now, there's a few other things which is basically just gameplay and you'll notice and I'll pick them out when they pop up. Um, uh, why this team works so well. But as you can see there... What a lucky goal that was. I mean, Callum Wilson, he was brilliant. I've really enjoyed him. Had him since the start of FIFA 17. I think it was on EA Access when I actually bought that card for 2,300 coins or whatever I paid for him. And I've still got him in the club. and probably never going to sell him um, unless like a squad builder comes out where he's going for like 20,000 coins or something ridiculous. Which, let's be honest, probably isn't going to happen. I'd be happy though if it does. Um, but yeah, let me uh, get out there. So, yeah, the, the main thing about this team, which I didn't really explain, was how it works. Like, how you'll notice, I'll pick it out, but as you can see now, we're, this is a counter-attack. I went counter-attacking straight away, and there's that man free there. There's a player free. He's getting away from the defense, so you would defend a little bit, and then you counter-attack, and then all of your players will push forward, and if you're getting hit on the counter-attack, after that, you've got three defend three centre-backs who, at least one of them staying back, the other two are going to rush back, and then you've got Quadrado who's also going to pull back a little bit, and it just, like, you play counter-attacking with this team. I went very attacking. I, I usually went attacking straight away. If I went 1-0 down, I was going ultra-attacking and uh, making sure I got back into the game. I did lose... I think it was either two, I think it was two of the games that I did play with the team. Very close games though, as Quadrado there. What a goal, what a player he is. He's so good, I've said that so many times this video, but he's so good. Really did enjoy him. Gonna have to use him in my Serie A team, obviously you guys know. I do like my Serie A players, obviously I've got that left wing in form, 85 rated Insigne, who I use in pretty much every game I play at this point. He's so good. Callum Wilson again, steps up, what a goal. Um, but the team pass it around a little bit, play counter-attacking and play very attacking. Put a lot of pressure on your opponent. Um, if, they're, if they're playing like tiki-taki football, it's not going to work against this team. You can second man press and have a play, like you can always have a player free and you can second man press a lot because it's not going to cost you like it would with a 4-3-2-1 where you've only got the three midfielders. In this formation, you've got literally five players who are playing defensively and then as soon as you counter attacking it's five or six players playing attackingly i don't see it as they're in a set position because that's not what it felt like in the game it was very interesting using the three back formation i've got to be honest it was 
it was rem like it reminded me of how FIFA 13 used to be when players who were really fast and really good were the standout players and you'd use them in a three back formation purely for the fact that this formation was so attacking and defense wasn't an issue you was going to outscore your opponent whereas on this FIFA it's more you're defending a lot um, defense is very important obviously and attacking if you can you're not going to outscore your opponent you can still play that way but with this you, you can defend with this team as you can see I'm 2-0 down at this point in the 35th minute and uh, you know, I was I was worried. This was the last one of the last games I played. I managed to get one goal back into it, but the game finished 2-1. So I managed to go another 65 minutes without conceding. So you can still defend with the three-back formation. I feel that's people's main concern. If you've only got three defenders, how are you gonna defend? Well, with a four four back, you've got two full backs who are pushing up quite a lot. And unless you set them to stay back while attacking. With this, you've got three defenders and then a right mid, a left mid, who will also want to pull back. But we are running out of time, guys. We are coming up to the last clip. Anyway, that is going to be the end of this video. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you drop a like on the video. If you have any video suggestions, please let me know of them in the comments down below. And as always, guys, make sure you all have an absolutely incredible day. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and peace.